Hello, welcome back for another video. You know, it's often difficult to choose what lenses we need to photograph the night sky and landscape. And in this video, I'd like to help you understand why we might choose one type of lens over another. I'm gonna show you a number of images shot with different lenses and hopefully this will give you a clear insight into how I'm thinking while I'm out there shooting. Now, before we go too far, I wanna refer you to a video I shot a few years ago comparing four different focal length lenses, shooting the same subject on the same night. It's quite amazing just how each focal length renders this tree and background sky. They each have their benefits, but I must admit to loving the longer focal lengths in this particular case. Now, I'd say the vast majority of people starting out in nightscape photography are encouraged to get an ultra wide angle lens, maybe somewhere between 14 and 16 millimeters on a full frame camera. But even before that, we will just often try out whatever lens we already have and see if that one may do the job for us. Now that makes perfect sense, and I did just that. I used to own a Sigma 28 mm f 1.8 lens. Now, it was by no means a premium lens, but it was the fastest aperture wide angle lens that I had at that time. Now you can see some of the images I took with this lens, and even though it had a nice wide f 1.8 aperture, the corner sharpness, vig netting and coma were pretty bad. But at least it gave me an idea of what I may be looking for when selecting a new lens. So I was probably like many of you. I did my research and found that the majority of people shooting Milky Way images at that time were suggesting the Samyang 14mm f 2.8 lens. It came in uh, various mounts for different cameras and it was pretty cheap. I guess it seemed a no-brainer. I'd try it out and even if I wasn't happy with it, I really hadn't wasted much money. And you know, that's exactly how it played out. I actually got a couple of these lenses and still could not find a sharp copy. So I eventually bit the bullet and purchased a pretty expensive Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens as a replacement. Now, this lens was far better than the Samyang, and I was now set to continue my journey. But you know what? Even though this was a great lens, I was never really happy with the wide angle distortion at 14 millimeters. Strange as it may sound, I preferred the look of my old 28 millimeter images, even though they were nowhere near as sharp. So I was on the lookout for something else, perhaps in between these focal lengths. And that's when I decided to try the Nikon 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens. I was shooting with the Nikon D750 at the time and this lens was a perfect fit for that combo. Small and lightweight, it seemed just about right. But at that time, I'd never seen anyone using it for astro landscape images. So it was a bit of a gamble, especially at about $800 to purchase. Well, I bought that lens and loved it from day one. It wasn't a perfect lens by any means, but it was sharp and clean right across the frame. But more importantly, I loved the focal length. You see, at 20 millimeters, there's far less distortion than at 14 millimeters. And that's something very few people actually mention when suggesting lenses for nightscape use. Now, of course, if you wanna shoot a grand landscape with the widest possible field of view, then by all means, use a, an ultra wide like the 14 millimeters. I mean, you're gonna get more in and often the distortion isn't an issue with trees and rocks and everything else. They're not straight anyway. But when you wanna shoot a scene featuring a closer foreground subject of interest, well, that's when you'll see what I'm talking about. I guess uh, things like cars or trucks or, or machinery or whatever, uh, that'll display oval shaped wheels that are supposed to be round. And worse still than that, buildings will have very sloping vertical walls. Now, this is often hard to fix in post-production and to be honest, most people just leave it as it is because of that. 
Now, I have to admit that this can still be a problem even at 20 mil, but it's far less than at 14 millimeters. So for me, the decision to shoot at 20 millimeter with all the benefits such as the fast F1.8 aperture, uh, less distortion, and true shapes of objects far outweigh the convenience of shooting ultra wide so I can fit more into the frame. Okay, so do I ever still shoot at 14 millimeters? Well, yes, in fact, I shoot almost all of my time lapses at 14 or 15 millimeters. And the reason is that I wanna fit as much of the sky in as possible. Now, I often use this these days. This is my Nikon Z6 with the Nikon 14 to 24F 2.8 Z mount. You see, most time lapses are cropped to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And that means you lose a bit at the top or bottom or sometimes both of the frame. So I need all the view that I can get. So what ultra wide angle lenses am I using now? Well, I just showed you one, but I originally bought the Lauer 15 millimeter F2 for shooting my time lapses. Now this comes in a native Nikon Z mount and it seemed like a great option, but I have to admit that it isn't really all that sharp especially in the corners. It is really well built, small and lightweight. It ticks a lot of boxes and for shooting time lapse, well, it actually does the job quite well. However, I've never been happy with its performance as a dedicated still image lens. So that's why I recently bought this baby, which I showed you a minute ago, for the Nikon Z mount. This lens is expensive and I had to trade out a few others just so that I could actually justify that. It's an awesome lens and very sharp indeed. But what other lenses would I recommend for shooting nightscapes? Well, a lot of people would suggest the 24 millimeter focal length. And to be honest, I think it's a great range. Once again, not too wide, but still considered a wide angle lens. You'll also find lots of lenses that feature this focal length, uh, look often kit lenses even, that can be a really useful option. Once again, I'd like to refer you to an earlier video of mine where I tested the Nikon 24-70 F4 kit lens at 24 millimeters to shoot a night landscape. Once again, I was actually really impressed with the quality of this combination. And just before I move on, I have to also mention the amazing Sony 24 millimeter F 1.4 G Master lens, which I shoot all of my video clips with the equally amazing Sony A7S 3 camera, which is using now just to film this video. I'd have to say that this lens is pretty much as good as you'll get. Bright and clear, no aberrations, no coma, hardly any VIG netting, all in all, it's a dream lens, especially for shooting my nighttime videos on location. Now, I guess the only downside of this baby is the high price, but you get what you pay for. So as I alluded to earlier in the video, I love to shoot at 35 millimeter or even 50 millimeter focal lengths whenever the situation allows it. And these are actually not considered astro lenses, but I can assure you they give excellent results. I think that as you extend the focal length of your lenses, you'll find that you really need to make use of the faster apertures. Now, thankfully, F1.4 or F1.8 apertures are actually quite common in this range. This is the 35 millimeter F1.8. And I've used both the Sigma and the Nikon 35 millimeter lenses with excellent results. There's no reason why you can't shoot even single images with this focal length. Sure, you've got to lessen the shutter speed, uh, but it's certainly a good option for nightscapes. And there is really um, very little distortion at 35 millimeters to worry about. And if you have a star tracker, then the options are far greater. And many people enjoy making really detailed multi-image panoramas at these longer focal lengths. So I always carry a 35 millimeter lens with me whenever I go out, and I make use of it more than you may think. Now, speaking of longer lenses, just about everybody uh, owns a nifty 50 of some sort. 
and I've got one here somewhere. Here it is. Looks the same as the 35, so it's confusing. So the 50 millimetre F1.8, it's made in every brand and they can be purchased at pretty reasonable prices. Now these days, I'm shooting exclusively with the native Nikon Z mount lenses. And I have to say that this Nikon 50 F1.8 S lens is as good as they come. It's small, lightweight, sharp, right across the frame, easy to focus, and not overly expensive. Now, another one I always have floating around in the camera bag, and I've shot at 85 millimeters on occasions, and it's a lot harder to frame a composition at 85 millimeters, let me tell you. Mostly, to be honest, I've used it as a specialty portrait lens, but I have to say it's perfect for that. I do love a good selfie from time to time. You can see from these images at 85 millimeter that it works quite well. Now, obviously all of these lenses can be used on a star tracker with excellent results. Now, speaking of star trackers, you can use pretty much any lens on a tracker. You may have a slow aperture kit lens that isn't great on a standalone tripod, but if you use a tracker, you can stop down that aperture a fair bit and, and you can lengthen the shutter speed to whatever you want. Lower the ISO and get absolutely great results. Now, if you stop down the aperture on any lens, you'll get a sharper image with less aberrations. And, and to be honest, that's a great reason to use a star tracker. Okay, so you can see from what I've shown you so far that I use a fairly wide variety of lenses. I found many years ago that to get the most creativity and variety in my nightscape photography, I needed to vary the focal length of my lenses. I mean, anyone can shoot a scene at 14 millimeters, but it takes a whole lot more thought and planning to capture an amazing scene at 50 millimeters. But I can tell you that it's an amazing feeling when you do. All right, so to sum up all of this, my go-to lens as a general purpose all-rounder is the 20 millimeter f1.8. Now I realize for you Canon shooters that there are not so many options for you in this focal range. You've really only got the uh, Sigma 20 mil f1.4 or perhaps the Samyang 20 millimeter f1.8. Now these are actually both quite good lenses though, um, even though they're made primarily for DSLRs. So after the 20 mil, I'd go for the 24 or 35 millimeter focal range. Now there are lots of these available at either f1.8 or f1.4, and pretty much all of them are pretty high quality. So in my opinion, the newer mirrorless lenses, the ones I've showed you here, are better as a general rule than the older DSLR equivalents. Um, I've used them all. And I get, look, I guess that makes sense. I mean, it's just newer technology and everything else, but you can certainly still use the older lenses with an adapter on the mirrorless cameras with great results. In fact, I did that for years. If I want something more specialized or artistic, I'll reach for the 50 mil or the 85 mil. And you know, it won't be every time I go out to shoot, but I can tell you they're never stored too far away. So as mentioned, I tend to use my ultra wide lenses for time lapse. Now I have both of these as I showed you, the Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8 and the Lauer 15mm f2 for that purpose. My, I may also use the Nikon lens for star trials or even uh, single frames from time to time if I want that extra wide angle view. I know the Sony 14mm f 1.8 G Master is another excellent lens for you Sony shooters. Small and lightweight, excellent image quality at a very fast f1.8 aperture. Oh, and that's something I should mention. Even though I usually stop there my lenses from their maximum aperture, there are occasions where I'll open them wide up to capture the maximum amount of light, especially when I'm shooting in a, a really dark location or uh, perhaps during an aurora. I'd say all of these lenses are fantastic wide open. Yes, they will be sharper, stop down a little bit, but I'll tell you what, if you have, um, I don't know, say an f2.8 lens, you can't shoot it at f1.8 or f2, but if you have 
an f 1.8 lens, you have the choice to stop it down to f 2.8 and still have a really good fast aperture as well as a sharp image. But when the occasion calls for it, you can open it right up, right up to f 1.8 and capture all that beautiful light when you need it. It's there and you really can't beat that as a nightscape photographer. So there you go. These are the lenses I use to capture all of my nightscape images. And I hope you got something out of this discussion. Look, I realize I haven't addressed crop sensor cameras or lenses for those, but I'm happy to chat further down below in the comments section. All right, until the next video, you guys have an awesome week and I'll look forward to seeing you then.